Two films, two Oscar nominees, one vision. The Queen Lady Gaga pun counter is active as Bohemian Rhapsody takes on A Star Is Born here on Movie Feuds. Malik comfortably slips into the role of legendary frontman Freddie Mercury. The audience gets to see the world through his eyes, a world that to him is often lonely. He is a performer through and through, extravagant outfits, a powerful stage presence, and millions of adoring fans paint the picture of a man who lived to entertain. It's amazing how much he contrasts the rest of the band members, who are far more focused on writing and just playing the music correctly. Freddie's girlfriend, or common-law wife as he refers to her, gets a pretty meaty role in this too as a prominent figure in Mercury's life. Actress Lucy Boynton as Mary Austin is a kind, strong-willed anchor for this singer to lean on. For Mercury, she was definitely somebody to love. Speaking of love, the chemistry between Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga is incredible. I didn't really know what to expect when a person willingly goes by the last name Gaga, but she managed to impress with her acting chops. I also didn't expect such an amazing romance between the two leads. I thought for sure it would be the opposite of that, which would be a bad romance. I know, that was terrible. Hey, I was born this way. Triple Threat Bradley Cooper co-wrote, directed, and acted the shit out of this film as Jack, a country rocker at the peak of his fame. He sells out packed arenas to millions of adoring fans all around the world and has more money than he'll ever need. There are a million reasons for him to be happy, yet he hits the bottle nightly, drinking away his problems like it's the cure. Turns out the real medicine was Allie, an airport worker by day and a nightclub singer by... Well, well, night. These two make the movie unforgettable, but Jack's relationship with his brother Bobby, played by Sam Elliott, is just as interesting. Two comedians show up out of nowhere in both films. Dave Chappelle plays it straight as a sympathetic family man, while Mike Myers gets to go over the top as a douchey record label producer. A made-up role for the movie, basically a wink to the audience in reference of Wayne's World. He was there for the applause. 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 He was there for the applause, applause. These puns are going to keep happening, so either push through it or leave. Do what you want. It's your life. Is this the real? Bohemian Rhapsody is based on the true story of Queen. I use the air quotes because there are always portions that are slightly inaccurate or just completely made up simply for entertainment's sake. That said, I'm not going to discredit things and point out what's what because I honestly don't know. I can say with confidence that the movie is a blast to watch, mainly because the topic is so freaking amazing. We get to see the forming of one of the greatest bands of all time and take a peek behind the scenes of the killer queen himself, Freddie Mercury. Glimpses of his family life, his love life, and the struggles to endure with the band over the years are all on display. No matter how dark things got for Freddie and the other band members, one thing was made perfectly clear. The show must go on. As interesting as Freddie's sexual entanglements were, I was far more interested in the forming of Queen and how they created all their amazing music. Thankfully, the X-Men director puts a good chunk of time into it. Specifically, the film's title song, Bohemian Rhapsody. The way they produced that and the album as a whole was a blast to watch. True or not, it was a spectacular portion of a somewhat disjointed movie from a production standpoint. Ironically, it won an Oscar for its editing, which boggles my mind, but I'll get more into that later. A Star is Born is the fourth time this movie has been made, each one following the same basic structure, but brought up with the times for a new generation to enjoy. Jack is a broken man, sitting on the edge of glory. Each drink could be his last. That is, until he sees Allie perform at a club after finishing his own show. They hit it off immediately, and it doesn't take long for Allie's telephone to ring the next day. Next thing she knows, she's performing a duet with one of the biggest musicians in the industry. She's a bit nervous, but the crowd doesn't seem to notice. All they hear is Radio Gaga. And it's music to their eyes as these two share their intimate song. As the title suggests, a star is indeed born, and Allie finds herself stepping out of Jack's shadow and into the flashing lights of the paparazzi. As one career grows, another starts to fade. That's when tragedy strikes. Jack is too weak to be alone. Thanks to a terrible childhood, it doesn't take much for him to slip back into darker places. Even though Bohemian Rhapsody covers Mercury's death, it's an overall uplifting celebration of the band. The last 30 minutes is most of the performance from their Live Aid show. The last 30 minutes of A Star Is Born is a heartbreaking tale of love and loss. No matter which story appeals to you more, one thing is certain. I'm in love with my car. Tell me something, girl. Patreon supporter Caleb Creech, awesome name, 
is all in on A Star is Born. I went into A Star is Born expecting a mediocre experience and was surprised with an emotional masterpiece. B. Coop and LG put their all into their performance and music, which, along with Cooper's amazing direction, elevate the movie above the rest this year. A Star is Born will grip you, shock you, and touch your heart. Amongst other things. Not even sure what that means. Over in the YouTube community, Slip and Jimmy states, A Star is Born hands down. Gaga and Cooper both give powerful performances. The soundtrack was phenomenal. Bohemian Rhapsody was shallow compared to this. And I don't believe we've used that pun yet, so let's put it on the board. Thank you, Saul. On the flip side, we have Freddie going with Bohemian Rhapsody. The reason he states is, I love the music so much. I've been a fan of Queen for as far as I can remember, so it was nice to hear their magic in the theater. As a movie, I thought it was okay. The musical bits, like the Live Aid performance at the end, were made really well. Oh, and also I thought Rami Malek was amazing in it. The Oscars agree with you! Let's move on to production. This is where I feel like I'm going slightly mad. When I reviewed Bohemian Rhapsody after it hit theaters, I praised the acting and the way the music was center stage, but criticized it for some of the technical issues. The Academy apparently saw something I didn't when handing out the Oscar for its editing. There are multiple noticeable moments in this film where a standstill camera is shaking when it shouldn't be. It's clearly just supposed to be a wide shot showcasing what we're going to be seeing. There's also a lot of random editing cuts where someone's talking and it's quickly jumping to different people in the room for no reason at all. I don't even know who I'm supposed to focus on in the scene. I know virtually nothing about sound design, but supposedly they blended Malik's voice with Mercury's to get some sort of a hybrid sound. I thought that was done very well, so congrats to that. I'm just not going to give those visuals a pat on the back, because I didn't see it. In fact, the movie as a whole is very by the numbers when it comes to these biopics, even ending the movie with that lame stock image with text. And I do think a band like Queen should elevate above those common practices. Now, if you're looking for a very fun, very fast-paced movie, Bohemian Rhapsody has it covered. Hell, this is one of those movies you can throw on in the background on a Sunday afternoon and just dance to all the hits. You know, Spotify is also good for that, so maybe that doesn't mean anything about the movie. A Star is Born just technically looks and sounds better in every way to me. It may not have the huge lineup of songs Rhapsody does, but the ones in A Star is Born are nothing to scoff at. But hey, I'm just one GUI with one opinion. Let's see if it stacks up with the others in the polls. The clear winner is obvious. It's A Star is Born. It's not even close for me. And I'm sure the YouTube community who I've grown to love and respect over the years will agree. And here we have it, folks. The Star is Born picks up a whopping 37% of the votes, making Bohemian Rhapsody the winner by a pretty large margin at 63%. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. You motherfuckers clearly just voted on the movie that had your favorite band in it. You based it off the music. I don't even think some of you fucks even went out and saw A Star is Born, you pieces of shit. You voted for what you loved. Not movie-wise, band-wise, and it makes me sick to my stomach. No, no, don't stop me now. I'm having a good time, and I don't want to stop at all. All right, I've calmed down. I'm sorry. Thank you for watching, and remember, this is more than just reviews. This is movie feuds. There. Another one bites the dust. As a bonus on this episode, I asked the YouTube community to guess the amount of puns I would come up with and the winner is Kaiser Souza, right on the money with 22. A few people guessed 22, but he was the first, thereby becoming honorary pun king. This comes with no prize. Thanks for watching.